Hello, I'm Perrin Beatty, President and CEO of the Canadian Chamber of Commerce, and welcome to the Business of Business. This program is a series of conversations with distinguished Canadians about a range of, of topics throughout the COVID-19 crisis. We'll be talking about issues like government support programs that are available to business, or the challenges that business operators are, are facing, or how all of us can manage during the crisis. We're very fortunate today to have Jeff McCowan as the President and COO of uh, Canada Life. Jeff has been with the company for some 30 years, but uh, recently became president and COO. And uh, it's a brand that's well known in Canada, but it's changed over the course of the past year. And Jeff, welcome to the program. We're delighted to have you. And maybe we can start by you giving a bit of a description of the company itself and some of the changes you've undergone in the last year or so. Very good to see you and uh, and so good of you to reach out. Thank you for having myself and, and Canada Life uh, today. Um, so thank you for asking. Um, Canada Life, um, as many Canadians may know, is uh, we rebranded about a year ago. Actually, it was April 3rd. And uh, how, how fast is a year ago? Oh, my gosh. Um, but Canada Life, uh, London Life, and Great West Life uh, were operating uh, uh, now as one. And uh, we bring together close to 450 years of experience in operating Canada and now under one new brand, Canada Life. Um, we're a financial services uh, organization, I believe, that uh, people would know. Um, we have 11,000 employees here in Canada and 25,000 worldwide, but 11,000 here in Canada. Um, we are very prominent and active in, in the life insurance area, uh, wealth management, uh, group insurance on group retirement, uh, group life and health. And uh, we actually serve close to one in three Canadians, uh, close to 13 million uh, Canadians uh, called Canada Life a Partner. So uh, that's something we take very serious. That's an extraordinary presence throughout the country. And you're very much involved in, in dealing with this COVID-19 crisis, both as a, as a company that helps with wealth management and life insurance programs, but also as a manager of, uh, of a very large operation. And I want to touch on, on both of those. Can you tell us a bit about how the company is managing at this point and uh, what are you doing internally in terms of your relationship with your own employees and uh, with the advisors who, who uh, are working with you across the country? And what are the challenges that you're facing in, trying, in terms of trying to manage through, uh, through this current pandemic? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's certainly been interesting times and all of us uh, have been learning a little bit as we go. Um, I mentioned we have uh, 11,000 employees. Uh, we also partner with close to 23,000 advisors and consultants uh, to, to meet the needs of Canadians. We, we, Aaron, we've really had two key priorities. Number one, uh, to take care of our employees through this uh, time and our employees and their families. So that's really been job one for us in terms of making sure uh, our employees are safe. Number two, obviously, uh, and not in that order, I'd say one and one, uh, but uh, to take care of the, our customers, the 12 and a half million customers uh, that, that uh, call Canada Life their home. So those two have gone, gone hand in hand and we've worked uh, extremely hard to do that. Um, to your point also, boy, have things changed. It wasn't that long ago, uh, say, uh, wow, eight weeks ago, um, that um, long time ago. Uh, that uh, eighty five percent of our employees uh, came to work in the building uh, buildings across Canada. Uh, today, I was just checking before our call here, actually only four percent remain working in the building, or ninety six percent are working virtual and remote. Um, to me, this is uh, mind boggling, but it goes to show, resiliency of Canadians and Canadian business on what you can do if you have to. I was even reflecting on our call centers. We have uh, close to 750 people in call centers across Canada. Zero percent uh, were working outside of the call center itself, uh, call it eight weeks ago. Probably about three weeks ago, we moved to 100 percent were working virtual from their homes. So this is, uh, to me, this uh, is, is just brings opportunity. It's a, it's a terrible way to do it, but it brings lots of great opportunity. But I look at the Canadian Chamber, uh, we have in the neighborhood of 50 people and it worked quite seamlessly for us to move to a virtual office. That's nothing like the challenge that you've had in doing that. 
What, what were the challenges? Were there glitches along the way or did it move entirely smoothly? Well, uh, I'd love to say there was no glitches, uh, but you know, I think, I think uh, Perrin, like any strategy, uh, when this hit upon us, um, we had to do three things. Um, one, we had to then step back and define our strategy. So how, how are we going to deal with this? And, and that sounds so basic, but it's so hard to do. So define our strategy in terms of clear outcomes of what we wanted to accomplish. Two, <clears throat> like any strategy, it always seems to be this big. So then we narrowed it and said, you know, let's get really focused. Um, let's, let's get real. Um, what can we really accomplish? And then three, you know, uh, then let's own it and let's deliver. And so uh, what we have found is that uh, by stepping back, being clear in our goals, uh, articulate, and, and, then, and then focusing on them uh, with communication and project plans, et cetera, uh, it's amazing what you can do. So I am uh, extraordinarily uh, uh, positive in terms of what this has brought new muscle for us as an organization, which, are going to, which is going to pay off for years and years in serving Canadians. So when this is over, do you go back to doing business the way you did before, or is this a permanent change? This is a question, Perrin, that I've been reflecting on. Um, with 96% of the people across Canada out, um, and when this comes back to normal times, do we call everybody back into the office? I suspect there'll be a period of time where we will want to uh, sort of retrench for a moment, if I can call it that, and sort of get back. But I think uh, things will never go back to where, to where they were. And I say that very positively. Um, I think we've developed new muscle, as I referred to. I think that our, our digital enablement has allowed us to reach Canadians much more effectively than we have before. Our relationship our, with our own employees has, has improved significantly by allowing, if I can call it that, working from home. Um, the strength that customers are viewing us as and our partners and advisors, our ability to be flexible and, and act quickly has been significantly enhanced. So I, I would like to say that uh, we will build on our strengths, but the future going forward, um, we won't need uh, uh, some of the capabilities we had in the past. We'll be able to move forward in a much quicker way. Let's touch on that for a little bit, uh, both in terms of business strategy and in terms of public policy, yeah. because all of us would give our right arms if we could go back to where we were six weeks ago and have avoided all of the pain for, for Canadians. But as, as we look at when this is finally over and when we finally emerge and when we finally restart the economy, should our goal be to return to where we were or uh, should we be looking now at laying the foundation or something that's profoundly different. We'll be a society that's much more digitized, and we've been forced to make organizational structural changes that many of us had never considered before. Are there broader implications for Canadian business and for um, Canadian public policy as a whole? So what I've been thinking about in our leadership team, Perrin, is um, strategy before COVID and strategy after COVID. And, uh, and you were leading, leading there with, so what has changed? Uh, what has changed uh, for us as Canadians or as small business? And uh, what, what I think about are things like the following, uh, that um, Canadians really do um, uh, have the ability to be flexible and change and be adaptive. And so we as a, as a, uh, a marketer of financial products in Canada, need to continue to meet the ways and needs of Canadians and they want to buy and be served differently. So the anytime, anywhere is really here. It was always here, but it's really here. I think more of the, the whole digital, um, everything digital, less paper. I mean, we've been trying to get rid of paper uh, and have the easy button for a long time. Boy, does this accelerate our story along the way. I, I also think about us and small business that, um, if we want to push and push hard, we really can get to the other side. Uh, what we've been able to accomplish here at Canada Life, and I say that not, not in a bragging way, but rather all Canadians, is that um, we got to this point, but um, we can go a lot further uh, by pushing the envelope, whether it be on our key strategies, our actions, or if we had to serve Canadians in a different way, could we do it? And we've been able to do it. So I think that um, 
uh, this will prove us to have a lot of new opportunities and we are going to capture those as, as we move along the way. Looking at how you're managing at the present time, I guess communications is absolutely critical. How are you communicating with your employees? How are you communicating with, with your clients? So I, I, years ago, I worked with a gentleman who told me that uh, you have to tell people 21 times uh, for, it to, for them to really get it. Uh, I probably am one of those. Um, I'm really proud of what we've done in this area, Karen. If I take those three groups, we've, we've, uh, we've worked hard first internally uh, with our own 11,000. Uh, so we have obviously had constant daily communication with our, with our teams across Canada. We've had email uh, communication. We've had webinars like you and I are chatting today. We've had town halls. Um, we've had, uh, dare I even say, some paper communication, very little, but constant, constant, constant. And we've continued to keep to some key themes, uh, taking care of our employees and taking care of our customers. As far as advisors, um, we've had a tremendous support in terms of reaching out to those advisors on a weekly basis, small business owners. Here's what's changing. Here's what's not changing. Here's how you partner with Canada Life. Uh, uh, how can we help you? Uh, what do you need from us? Uh, we have been in constant, constant communication. We have the largest wholesaling organization in Canada in the financial service space. So we're continuing to touch through virtual in non-face-to-face -face ways. Um, the other thing I would say with our customers, of course, through technology and digital, we've continued to reach out to them. And we've done it in such a way that we've not made it um, too noisy, but been clear on the key attributes of what we were trying to get to. Um, communication, um, you know, when people understand something, they're more likely to buy your services or keep your services. So we have over-indexed on all those three constituents and used every vehicle we have, uh, significantly using, um, uh, whether it be Microsoft Office or Zoom or Teams so through Microsoft and all the devices we've had, um, here's what I've learned though through this process, um, whether it be in internally, advisors or customers, they are uh, in high need of information. And this is a time when we have felt that Canada Life uh, is needed more than ever, uh, particularly with financial service products, to let them know that they're safe, uh, how they can be helped, uh, what, where's the information, and so um, lots of communication that we've been working at hard, probably like yourself. Now, your, your companies over the years have been very concerned about issues like uh, mental health in the workplace. What are you doing through this, this crisis, both in terms of your own employees and to ensure their mental health, but also in terms of the resources the company is putting into promoting the, the mental health of Canadians? So we have, and thank you for acknowledging that, um, that uh, we have uh, always had a, a strong focus on mental health. Uh, and and uh, what we've been doing through this last uh, number of weeks is we've continued to reach out and stay close to our employees. Um, and we've had lots of forums to continue to listen. And back to our principles of staying safe and families safe. And if people haven't felt safe coming into work uh, for whatever reason, a parent, uh, we've been comfortable with that and, we, and we've continued to, to, to pay employees along the way. So what is a company without uh, uh, safety and what, are, what, are, what is a company without employees feeling uh, that they're in a, a good environment? Uh, I mean, certainly we um, uh, have, have been a leader in this space through the workplace strategies for mental health. Um, I would say millions of Canadians have been on this website with all kinds of information and, and we continue to promote that significantly. We've partnered with an organization called Dialogue, where we've made this all available to all of our employees across Canada. And I should say, we're also uh, um, making this available to our, our group life and health clients all across Canada. Uh, recently, uh, we partnered with Morneau Chappelle's um, WellCan app uh, that focuses on mental health. It's just been launched. It's a fabulous app, and, um, and we encourage Canadians to take advantage of this. But um, we, we continue to, to double down on this space. Um, we're very aware of, of, of the challenges it brings to employers across Canada. And, and um, people come first. Uh, and uh, so we work hard to make sure people are being taken care of. With your, with your own employees uh, now feeling a sense of isolation, often people are concerned about, will my family be safe? What sort of a future do I have for my job? Uh, when will we be, we be able to come back into society? How are you trying to manage that with, uh, with an employee base that is so large? 
Boy, uh, well, just today, uh, uh, we announced um, uh, this morning that um, uh, there will be no layoffs to Canada Life employees in Canada. Uh, so we announced that this morning, uh, Karen, uh, and um, so one way that we're dealing with it is to provide security and peace of mind uh, to employees who work for Canada Life. So what we have said, we've taken a leading position in Canada and we have said that uh, there will be no layoffs due to COVID-19 at Canada Life. Uh, the feedback, of course, as you might imagine today, has been absolutely overwhelming. Uh, That'll be an incredible our, burden off of people. In incredible. And, and what we're really saying um, is that um, through our three companies, Great West Life, One the Life, and Canada Life, and now under one brand, Canada Life, is that we're here for the long term. Uh, we've been here for 150 years. Uh, we think long term. Uh, financial security is about long-term commitments. Today, someone will buy a life insurance policy and we're making an, a commitment for perhaps 100 years from today. The only way we can do that is through the strength of our people. So we know that there's parts of our organization where workloads have reduced. I might also say there's areas that it's increased significantly. But we know we're going to come out of this. And when we do, uh, we want to be there, we want to be strong, and we want our people here. And so one of the ways, the biggest way we've done this, uh, parent, quite frankly, is to make that commitment, which is just today. And in addition to that, we continue to reach out, listen to our employees, listen to their ideas, listen to their innovation. It's a time to probe and change and challenge traditional ways of, of doing things. And so we've made lots of changes in the last six weeks that we probably didn't do in the last five years because employees have said, I have an idea. And boy, has it resonated and worked for us. You were mentioning that you take a long view. Uh, obviously, many Canadians are worried about their financial security at this point. Uh, and we've seen figures coming out of government and elsewhere indicating that the Canadian economy is being hammered at the present time. Uh, what advice do you have for Canadians? And, and what is your sense as to where we go from here? Well, if you look back in history, and, and Perrin, and I know the Chamber has done a nice job on this, um, you know, this isn't the first time we've dealt with some challenges, perhaps not as severe as this one in the most recent times. High, high interest rates in the early 80s, uh, you know, uh, the SARS, uh, the economic uh, uh, financial crisis, crisis uh, uh, that we went through uh, in 2007. 2007. Um, uh, so um, our encouragement is to continue to think long term. Um, history will repeat itself. Uh, stick to your plan. Um, we're strong, but we have strong belief in Canadians having advice. We know when people have advice with advisors, they're much better, uh, 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 their wealth is, is, is taken care of on a greater basis, on a long-term basis. So our advice to Canadians is to continue to stay the course, uh, get, get good, credible advice, uh, listen carefully to the economic trends, and, and stick with your plan, and, um, and continue to think uh, long-term. That's our view of how where we'll end up. I think it's very good advice. And Jeff, thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you for the support that Canada Life is giving to the Canadian Business Resilience Net Network, your commitment to mental health, and the commitment you have to your clients across Canada and your employees. We, uh, we're thrilled to partner, Perrin, I should say, with the Chamber on this initiative. Um, uh, what, what excites us so much is it is a single area of all the information and best practices that can drive all the small and medium businesses and employees and individuals across Canada to the Canadian Chamber. So we've always believed in the Chamber. Uh, we believe in it both nationally and regionally. Um, and uh, it's, it's good for us at Canada Life to be a partner of, of the Chamber. So thank you uh, for reaching out. Thank you for having, uh, having me here today. It's much appreciated. Thanks so much. Thank you.